Hi there, this is going to be a daily reading for Monday, November 12th. Hi everybody, this is the, I guess, aftermath after the 1111 portal and it's still open. Um, how long is it going to be open? I don't know, but it is definitely still open. I can feel it. Matter of fact, don't ask me why. Today, the 12th, it's the 12th here in Hawaii. I feel the portal energy stronger than I did yesterday for some odd reason. And I don't know why that is. That's just me personally. Now, as we know, 1111 ones are all about new beginnings. In the tarot deck, the four of wands card symbolizes union and marriage and, you know, stability because fours are about stability. A lot of people that first start awakening, the very first number you start to see, angel numbers, um, is 1111. And, you know, people mistake it thinking 1111 is a twin flame number. Then it is not just a twin flame number. It is an angel number. And anytime you see multiple numbers such as 555, 333, 888, 777, you know, 1111, things of that sort, Google it. Because if you're seeing repeated numbers like that, it's your angels or spirit guides trying to communicate with you. So let's just go ahead and get right into this. You know, I want to remind you guys that my Wish Upon a Starfish bracelet, there is still a little bit left in inventory. Perfect right now with the wish energy that we're feeling in November. November is going to be all about us making wishes, okay? Um, wishing on stars or wishing on starfish, honey. Whatever tickles your pickle. I'm, sorry, I'm going to move my camera just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so whatever tickles your pickle. Um, I want to remind you also that I am coming to New York next month. If you would like to purchase tickets to my event, please click on the box below, the description box below, and there is a link to purchase tickets. Please do not wait until the last minute because there is only a limited amount of tickets available for Friday, December 28th and Saturday, um, December 29th in Brooklyn. When you purchase your tickets, the location will be emailed to you at a later time, but it is in Brooklyn, New York. And I can't wait to see all of you guys. Those that come to see me in New York will have first-hand dibs on my new good luck bracelet that will be coming out the ending of December. So that's going to be very exciting to see everybody then. I may possibly have a small Black Friday sale if I have enough inventory. I'll announce that though if I do. It would of course be any Wish Upon a Starfish bracelets possible. I am loves if, you know, somehow we can wish to make more. I don't know, we'll see. All right guys, here we go. Oh, also because I'm gonna be in New York, I am looking for someone because, you know, the people that were gonna do my tarot card deck last year kind of bonked out on me. So, you know, I've kind of put that on the back burner for quite some time since that happened. But because I'm coming to New York next month, if you or anyone you know is into that type of publishing and can assist me in doing my own tarot deck, please let me know. Send me an email, any publishing companies, you know, for me to check out people in New York, that's the time. Wow, look at this. Your soulmate. Yes, this is your soulmate. And you have getting to know each other. As you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. Again, soulmates coming in if it hasn't already. This is a past life soulmate. Very six of cups energy here. I can just feel it and it's what I've been channeling for quite some time. This is definitely someone that comes in that's a counterpart. It's someone that is someone that you prayed for, someone that you wished for, someone that fits all of the characteristics off of your wish list. If you had a wish list of people or a person, you said, I want this, 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 that's, that, that's everything. This is a person that you are going to marry for a lot of you. It, it really is. It's like, I met my husband, I met my wife. It's that type of an energy. And I feel like it's upon immediately meeting that there's this weird spark. And it's not even like a spark like you felt before with other people of like attraction. This would be very, very different. Very different. Getting to know each other as you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. 
The bond is just going to be extremely severe the more you get to know each other. So put it this way. Upon meeting, there's this weird attraction, physical attraction, so deep attraction, beyond anything you've ever felt with anybody else. Then you guys get to know each other, and it's ridiculous after that. Like, it's unbreakable. You, almost to the point, and I know this is going to sound weird, but this is what I'm feeling. Almost to the point of, now that you found each other, right? For some of you, like I've been channeling for a while, this is a vow that you guys are remembering that you've made from past lives to find each other, some type of a ritual. And now that the souls have found each other, it's not going to let, let the other go. Meaning, it's going to pain you to be able to, to meet. I can't even get it out. It's crazy. The energy is running so strong. It's going to pain some of you guys when you meet each other and then have to break apart because you have to live your own separate lives. And like there's this period of time where you guys cannot just immediately get together and get married and live together and not leave each other's side. That's not going to work for a lot of you. It's going to be this transitional time period, I feel, and it's going to be not pleasant because once the souls meet, I feel like it's like they go, uh-uh, this is my person and I'm not letting them out of my sight. And it's going to be a bit of a challenge. And I feel like it will be a test for a lot of you. A test. It's not about being codependent because, you know, we've grown out of that energy of codependency and low vibrational devil-like energy and low self-esteem and needing someone to complete us. It's not about that. It's just about legit. This is the person that I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. And I don't want to spend it by myself. I want to spend it with you. It doesn't mean because I'm codependent. I still run my empire. And I've still learned the art of self-love. I have my own cup. But now that I've met someone that is from a past life that I have this agreement with, this vow with, I want to spend it with you. There ain't nothing wrong with that. As long as you have learned the art of self-love and you're not codependent searching for your worth in another person. People get that shit fucked up. Okay, you got to learn the difference. Knight of Pentacles. Oh, it was a slow process getting here, but it's here. Mm. Knight of Pentacles is the slowest card or the slowest energy in the entire tarot deck. I mean, this motherfucker took forever. It took I don't know how many lifetimes. And I know that that's exactly what it was. It took forever or it took many lifetimes. Somehow, some way, I don't know. This person coming in is, it's been a long time coming. And that's just all that I can feel is like, it's a long time coming. Oh, you got the hermit. The hermit is Virgo energy, but the hermit is someone that's on a particular path, finding themselves. It's spiritual awakening. The hermit is enlightenment also. This person has been single. Or you've been single. Finding yourself, finding your worth. It is then during the cocoon process, really, that, you know, one kind of awakens to its sole purpose. And I feel like that's exactly what happened. During an awakening process, one person was already awoke. The other person had to awake. And, like, this is the thing. We're never fully awoke. Okay, we're not. But one person was already awake. Meaning already aware of whatever soulmates twin flames spirituality the other person was not quite as awoke to that is what i mean you got here the king of wands could be aries Leo, sagittarius energy or just any sign that feels very fiery this is a go-getter you also have the ten of swords energy so the worst is finally over for someone something had to end here something ended that was not very pleasant the end of a karmic cycle is what i feel then the king of wands, someone that needs to step up, someone that's very focused on the prize is kind of what I feel. This is a person who once he puts his, once he sets his sights on something, he's going to come and get it. That's this energy right here. The king of wands energy could be the energy that we feel every time I pull the page of swords or the knight of cups. You know, page of swords is kind of this lurking, very investigative type of an energy. And the knight of cups is someone that wants to come in to offer something. They have like a secret admirer type of an energy. Queen of cups. This king of wands is admiring this queen of cups. This woman who has learned the art of self-love. She's learned the art of self-love because she knows that I am love. Don't forget that during Black Friday, my friend Kiyoki Tavares, who owns Aloha Elixir, um, he is going to have a very small batch of my I am love candles coming out. Okay, so 
keep a lookout go to alohaelixir.com sign up for his mailing list so that you can be very sure to get your discount code um, emailed to you it doesn't get emailed immediately guys so please be patient with kyoki and his team okay <coughs> very small amount now she has already learned that she is love she knows i am love she stands on her own two feet she has her own empire and kingdom she's not a follower she's a leader she's compassionate but not naive you know she is everything to him he is very intent on making her his or vice versa or same sex it doesn't matter this is just the energy someone awakens realizes something sees a person instant connection beyond their wildest dreams realizes she's it he's probably dreaming of her too because that's what i've been channeling that the dream state was like off the hook seven of cups there's your dreams and the four of cups someone longing for something seven of cups is the dreaming daydreaming or dream subconscious there it is right there i told you someone's dreaming for sure okay someone either pre like before they even met may have dreamt of a person or an energy of the person but it was like you knew it before it happened you could feel it or you saw it in a dream or meditation or whatever the case was it was like pre knowledge okay i don't know if that's even a word but whatever you guys know what i mean then you have the four of cups this is a person that's longing for something look at that She's, she knows which cup she wants. This is a person that puts their intentions out into the universe and says, this is what I want and I will not accept anything else. I will not accept crumbs. I want it all or nothing at all. This is that energy that I feel from the Four of Cups. Normally the Four of Cups is unrequited love, boredom, not being satisfied. I look at this card and immediately I see someone wished for this and that's what they're waiting on. They're not going to accept fucking crumbs. It's a person who's who knows their worth and knows it'll come. I'm not impatient and I'm not desperate. I'm just going to wait for the right one to come. Wheel of Fortune. Yep, when the time is right. This is destiny. This is good luck. You get this in your spread. Mm, mm, mm. Here comes good luck. Here comes Jupiter energy. Here comes manifesting miracles, right? Abundance when the wheel turns. This is all about destined and faded events serendipity everything i've channeled as i told you guys in a couple of readings before the internal compasses have been activated this looks like a compass to me meaning now they're gonna find their way back home they're gonna follow the north star home their true north is who they're gonna come and find this is the true north partner something gets activated they awaken or they remember <clears throat> it's gonna be different for all of you and then now the compass leads them back home leads them to who, who is the true the true lifetime partner so for a lot of them they might have been in relationships like this where they just weren't completely satisfied now i can assure you that is not going to be for very much longer okay look at that you have the ten of fucking cups boom Ten of Cups, as you guys know, is the happily ever after card. The card of feeling like you have it all. This is my second candle. Go to the link below. There's a link to order. This is my second candle. Not only does it smell amazing, it's made with rose oil, but also this is a manifestation intention candle. You light this and you're trying to manifest this. Ten of Cups is that feeling of having it all. The epitome in the, of, of joy and happiness ever after look at that it's on its way it's coming if you believe it all starts with like a wish the wish activates something and it makes somebody remember oh i have this contract i have this bond i have this vow that i made with a particular person in past life it, it literally activates it. And also it activates it not only just because of the wish, but because it's also time. It's just like several factors here that are, you know, coming together. All the little pieces are coming together. It's time, okay? This is going to help tremendously also because this is all rose quartz here. 
rose quartz is an amplifier to help you bring in this energy for manifestations okay and then of course this i am love bracelet is was so important because it's made with amethyst and rose quartz and as you guys know rose quartz is for heart chakra healing but also to attract love and soulmates you know that's why my i am love candle and i am love bracelets were so popular when they first hit the scene because you know who doesn't want to attract the right person to them but in order for you to attract that person you have to learn the art of self-love there was a period of time of being single and being hermit like and for some people they, that's the the demon part the devil part of them that they can't let go of they cannot be single and they keep focusing on the amount of time well i've been single for a year well it's been three years no one gives a shit the reason no one gives a shit is because the universe is looking at you going so what we don't care if it's three days or three years did you learn the lesson yet it's not even about the amount of time if you're able to learn the lessons immediately then done right done this is like being in a cocoon in the cocoon, it's this time of transformation. It's going to be a little different for everybody. The faster you transform, the faster you get out of the cocoon. Can't avoid the work because then you don't get the pay. Period. Reflection. Give each other some space at the moment. Trust and have faith that all will work out for the best. This is that energy that I felt up here when I told you guys that it would be almost physically painful for you guys to separate after meeting. This is it right here. Giving each other space. Trust and have faith that all will work out for the best. I told you I could feel it. So I don't know what this means. It might be a little bit different for all of you guys. I just don't know, okay? It might be very different for all of you. This, to me, and I could feel it earlier, two people meet, fall madly deeply in love, and for whatever reason, can't stay together at that moment, whether it's because of career, work, I don't know what the fuck it is, but there's going to be, after that, some type of a separation necessary because you know, it kind of happens unexpectedly here, too. A message for you. <coughs> I'm thinking of you this very moment. Your love fills me with light. I love you telling you these two souls already know they already love each other it's not the first time life is a series of constantly shifting cycles when we resist change we resist the natural flow of life and create unnecessary stress go with the flow you will be surprised where it leads mm. this is about surrendering and when we surrender we allow and when we allow we are then able to receive for some of you guys because you're fighting against the current here however that means for you the universe cannot deliver this to you because it's like it's trying to find the path of least resistance and you over here resisting like a motherfucker now this is going to be for some of you not all okay if the shoe foots wear it if the shoe foots <laughs> if the shoe fits wear it honey i can't even keep up right now with everything that's trying to be channeled through me i don't know how it's going to be this is the thing is sometimes during mercury and retrograde I get very tongue twisted and I cannot communicate properly and I communicate ass backwards things, which if you guys have been following me for quite some time, you guys know this. And Mercury is just right around the corner. So uh, I may be already affected. My electronics were already affected this past week. I couldn't make any phone calls out or receive any in for two days at the ending of the week. So uh, it would make perfect sense. My speech is all over the place, Sunny. We just got to make the best of it, right? When Venus goes direct on the 16th or the 17th, Mercury goes retro. And I'm a Gemini rising, so I don't know what else I have in my chart too, but sometimes I'm very, very, see, I almost did it again. Sometimes I'm very affected with my speech during Mercury and retrograde. Divine magic. Extra magical energy surrounds your situation right now. Expect miracles. I told you that today I felt like the 1111 portal was stronger for me for some reason. I don't know why. I felt it the second I woke up to this morning and I said, there's still magic in the air. And what I was doing is I was visually imagining everything that I'm trying to manifest, you know, and for me, sometimes it's what I do. Sometimes I verbally speak it out loud. Sometimes I imagine it and put it out there into the universe and into my vortex. There's magic in the air as I've been channeling for quite some time here. 
expect miracles to them. They're not saying maybe they'll come. I mean, I don't know. Let's try and do the best that we can. Uh, it says expect miracles. That's what it says. And, you know, this is a very magical time period right now. Literally expect magic, serendipity. You know, Jupiter is going to have its hand in the mix. You know, we also have Uranus and Mars and Venus and all these planets. And it's just the perfect mix for the perfect storm. But maybe, just maybe, sometimes we need to get lost in order to realize I'm lost and something inside of us activates, that compass activates because they say, I'm lost, I've got to find my way back home, right? It's all on purpose is my point. Someone has been going through some bullshit. Something tells me it's the masculine energy here. Um, that's going through some final wrap ups and the feminine's kind of sitting proud and sitting pretty on her throne already. But it could be opposite or it could be both of you, right? Every circumstance is a little different. Uh, something tells me it's the masculine wrapping something up here and he's in turmoil or it's been rough he's been stuck and it's rough out at sea and you know his survival skills kick in and it activates the compass inside of him or her and now the north star appears to them you now and then there we go here here we go coming home absolutely gorgeous huh i want to go ahead and pull a keepers of the light card here remember i would like to have my own tarot deck and it's something i had to put on the back burner last year because you know the person who was or the people that was supposed to help me do it i've just never heard of them i mean I've, excuse me i can't even talk you see i saw just mercury i didn't even hear back from them at all it's like they just vanished so that's not very good is it <laughs> so if any of you guys know of anyone that can assist me in finally picking that back up to have my own tarot deck please let me know i will be coming to new york next month oh look at this this is the counterpart the mirror the reflection the miriam sacred vision choose to forgive in order to heal see the light in all remember that love has no boundaries see this is a reflection and look you even had the reflection card here it's the counterpart it's your mirror image that's the person you meet all right, we're going to read it from the book here. The Miriam, which means the beloved, which sometimes is a.k.a. the twin flame, okay? Are twin flame angels who come as one. They are mirror images of each other. They are the angels who appeared to Mary Magdalene in the tomb of Jesus after his passing. These angels spoke directly to Mary and helped her move beyond her grief so that she was able to commune with Jesus one more. Excuse me, once more. They can help us move beyond the cloud of grief too. They heal grievances of all kinds, including ones that have been created by religion or the idea that God does not love or accept us because of a mistake we once made. The Miriam helps us remember that we don't need to ask God for forgiveness because he never condemned us in the first place. There is a real opportunity for you to move beyond grief or grievance at this time. The Miriam are here, swirling their holy light all around you so that you can regain a sense of union with spirit. You are loved beyond words. Choose to see the light of God in everyone and everything and to love without boundaries. Honor others and honor yourself with your sacred vision. You are in a space of deep healing and forgiveness. Choosing to see the light of the world will help you grow even more. I forgot to tell you guys too. Um... This is screaming, screaming, like the counterpart, mirror image, quote unquote, twin flame, beloved. Ugh, it's screaming at, you guys know how I feel about the term twin flame, that it's not about the labels, it's about the connection and the energy. And that recently I've really felt differently that, you know, back in the day, because there was very limited information about this, because none of this shit scientifically proven even now. Um... We all go with what resonates with us and what's been channeled to us personally. You know, I used to think back then it had to be one person and only one person. And maybe it is only one person. But, you know, what ended up happening is, is that for a lot of us, the one person that we thought was our twin flame wasn't. It was a falsy. 
It was someone who came in who taught us the biggest lesson of all, and it was the the, the art of fucking self love is what they taught. And so we realized, oh, that wasn't the twin. Oh, okay. So does that mean that there is not just one person that's supposed to be our twin? Is it mean? Does it mean that they just chose free will instead and they bailed out? So now this other counterpart comes in. We don't know, because like I said, there is no scientific proof. Don't argue about that. If you have some hard fucking evidence about that, then okay, great. But if not, listen, you don't like it, you just move the fuck on. When someone says, this is my opinion on soulmates and twin flames, if you don't agree, do the smart high vibrational thing, hunty, because everybody want to be talking about high vibes shit, right? Do the high vibrational thing and just click the fuck off. Okay, we all have different views about this. So... Is this where now the true counterpart comes in? The mirror image of you. And it's anyone who is just going to be the perfect mirror image of you at the time you are at your highest vibration or at a particular frequency, possibly the 144 frequency, okay? We don't know. Listen, that's the beautiful thing about life is that it's infinite possibilities about things, right? That's what's so great is to be open-minded of how it's going to happen and who cares about how it will happen the main thing is that it does this is just someone that's going to be a reflection of you so if you're a queen great then you'll attract someone that's kingly like or someone that's high up there in vibration you better get your shit together is my point because you don't want to attract someone that's doo-doo okay if you're low vibrational all right reminder if you guys want to meet me in new york i'm going to be in brooklyn december 28th and the 29th my tickets are already on sale click on the box below i can't wait to meet all of you guys please don't wait till the last second to order your tickets because it's very limited and it's going to be three hours and we're going to have a break in between i'm going to provide refreshments it's going to be awesome we're going to talk about everything okay so for the first part we're going to talk about like you know things like manifestation channeling tarot cards and things like that and then i'm going to open up the floor and i am going to allow all questions to be asked nothing is off of the table okay so this is going to be very exciting and i can't wait to meet you guys if you guys bring your candles in or your bracelets i will charge them up physically when i'm there if you guys want me to do that also okay all right you guys um follow me on instagram xi underscore missy underscore xi looks like right now we are still in that time period of magic and wishes and wishing on starfish and wishing on stars and the moon and everything else in between go ahead make a wish and then believe and expect and so it comes all right guys love you bye